Welcome back everyone, Mike here. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything I know about operating an excavator. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a heavy equipment instructor, I'm not a teacher, heck, I'm not even a professional, so take it for what it's worth. However, I do have probably, if I had to guess, probably about three or four hundred hours of experience on mini excavators and probably the same on larger excavators. So I know a little something about them, but like I said, I don't do this every single day. However, this video is for those of you out there that may be considering, you know, renting a machine like this. Hopefully this video will help you uh, familiarize yourself with a little bit before it gets there. All right, let's get right into it. This is the Kubota KX80 excavator. It's got the blade on it, and that is the angle blade. Hydraulic thumb. This machine weighs in a little over 18,000 pounds. This is a rental unit. I've been using it here on the property for the last couple weeks. I got a ton of stuff done with it, and it is a real joy to run. It really is. It's going to be sad to see it go. All right, this area where we're going to be working here this evening is uh, my little makeshift shale pit. I got a lot of nice shale out of here for up at our building pad. And uh, right here, you know, right below where the bucket is right here, there's some really good shale. So what I was doing is removing the overburden digging a nice pit, hauling that up to the building pad, and it worked out really well. Now this evening what I'm going to do, I'm going to get into this area here right behind the machine. I haven't disturbed this yet right here. I'm going to take some of that material off the top and then dig straight down and get a nice big pile of that coarse shale that I can use for fill in the future. Like out on the trails I need some. You just need some good material around once in a while, and uh, that's what we're going to do here tonight. Now we'll go over a few of the controls from outside the cab here, but then what I'll do when I'm running it, I'll try to get a camera showing the uh, joysticks and one on the outside and do like a picture in picture so you can kind of see what's happening. But right here, you have two pedals. This is your tram. This is forward and this is reverse. Now believe it or not, excavators do have a front and a back. This is the front of the machine right here. The front has the blade. Now, for bigger machines that don't have the blade, this is still the front. The reason is, see that? That's your idler right there. That's not what drives your tracks. Back here where that sprocket is, those are your drive motors right there. That's the back of the machine. Back, front. So when you want to move this, you know, I have the house spun this direction right now. If I push these forward or step on these pedals right here, if I push them that way, I'm going that way. So keep that in mind. The excavator has a front and a back. So you can tram, you know, with your feet, but it's a little bit easier, I find, using your hands like this. You know, push both of them forward, you're moving forward. You can turn like this, whatever. Each one works each track independently. You also have these two footrests right here when you're sitting in the seat and you really get into digging take your feet off the pedals you can put them on here now underneath this one here this flips up you can flip it up with your foot there's a pedal right here what this does push it to the left or you can push it to the right and what that does not only does the whole house on this machine spin but that'll rotate just your stick with leaving the house in place if that makes sense I'll show you that once we get into machine now just about every machine out there has this same setup right here you know you climb in the machine this is up out of the way once you're in the seat you'll pull this down like so all right and then this bar right here once this is down all the way and it's running everything's live it's ready to go if this is up like so 
You can start it, but nothing's going to work. Not until you sit in that seat. Sit in the seat, pull this down, it'll be ready to go. Now, like with any piece of equipment, when you're climbing into it, you want to have three points of contact. That could be uh, two feet, one hand, two hands, one feet, whatever you want. But make sure you have three points of contact so you don't fall out and hurt yourself. All right, you want to put your seatbelt on, and we're going to start it up. This is for the uh, blade. I'll show you that once we spin the machine around. Okay, we're going to put this down. And it's ready to go. All right, before we get started, I'm going to show you this right here. I showed you this just a minute ago. I'm going to step on the left side of this pedal. See what that does? Now I'm going to step on the right side. Swings it to the right. Now the house and everything, it's sitting still. I'm just swinging the uh, boom and the stick. Now when you're just hogging dirt or digging ditches out in the open, you don't use that feature very often. But if you're working near a house or something, it comes in really, really handy. All right, I'm going to set another camera up outside. And I'll have this one running in here. And we'll go over all the other controls. All right, the camera should be in a pretty good position that you can see uh, both joysticks and these two here that control the tram, and you can see the bucket as well. And like I said, I have another camera outside. We will do a picture in picture as well. Right now, we'll just go over the uh, controls of both joysticks. First thing I'm gonna do is put this bar all the way down because right now, it's not doing anything. See that? Nothing's happening. It's ready to go right now. I push this red bar all the way down. So this joystick on the right, pull back on it, lifts your boom up, push down on it, puts the boom down. Joystick on the left, push it out, that's the stick, moves the stick out, pull it back, brings the stick in. Back to the joystick on the right, curl it to the right, curls your bucket, move it to the left, dumps your bucket. Joystick on the left, swing to the left, move it to the left. Swing to the right, move it to the right. Now, like I said, this one has a uh, hydraulic thumb on it. First, you gotta activate that thumb. You have to do that each time you get in this machine, which is no big deal. You press that button right there, and you control the thumb with these buttons on this joystick right here. That closes the thumb opens the thumb. Those are the basic controls right there to move dirt. All right. Once we spin around and dig for a little bit, I'll show you how the blade works. And we're going to talk about blade positioning as well, at least what my opinion of it is. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people have different opinions on that. What's best to have the blade in the front, blade in the back. It, it depends on what size machine and what you're digging in my opinion and we'll go over that in just a little bit though all right let's swing around and get started now like i said right out here in front of me is that shale what i want to do is start digging that shale spin all the way around and dump it in a big pile behind me so i'm sitting here i'm going to put my blade down just a little bit take a little weight off the track so I'm pretty nice and stable where I'm sitting right now so what we're gonna do we're gonna put the stick out some because I'm gonna reach out there real far boom down now my teeth are just touching the ground almost straight up and down now the simplest way to dig you know my teeth are in the ground you can just curl this bucket you know this right joystick curl it to the right and you're digging. See that? All I did was move that in. Once those teeth were straight down on the ground, this is real basic what we're doing right now, but I have a loaded bucket of dirt right now. Now I'm gonna lift the boom up. And as you lift that boom up, 
you know, that dirt's going to want to dump out. So you'll kind of pull your stick in some too. Picture it like a glass of water or something. You're trying not to spill it. So pick the boom up some more with your joystick on the right. Maybe pull the stick in a little bit more. And then we're going to swing it all the way around. And we'll dump it. Now the dump is pretty easy, but I don't want to dump it right here. I want to get it out there as far as I can. So I'm going to put the stick out. I'm going to do one function at a time for now. Boom down. Stick out. See, I'm getting out there further and further. Boom down. Stick out. And now this joystick on the right, I want to dump it and just move it to the right. That's it. We just moved dirt. Now let's spin back around. Now what we're going to try to do is put all those motions together. All right, I'm going to bump the RPMs up a little bit. And so instead of just running one function at a time, I'm going to put my stick out and boom down at the same time. See that? I'm getting out there. Teeth are straight down. And I'm actually pulling the stick in a little bit right now. Now I'm curling my bucket in. I'm into hard stuff already. And lifting the boom up at the same time. And there we go. Spin all the way around. Reach out. Dump. Alright. to put all those motions together good spot right now to talk about blade positioning. Do you want that blade in front of you or behind you? Now most of the time in a machine this size I like having the blade in front of me. Now keep in mind especially this angle blade it sticks out in front of the machine quite a bit and if you're digging a deep hole down in front of you you lose visibility because that blades in the way you can't really see what you're doing as well but generally speaking I like to run with a blade in front of me. However there are exceptions to that like right here I'm in some pretty hard material right now. And what happens when you're in that hard material, I'll show you. You push down on it, it's, it's lifting up the machine as I'm digging. It's lifting up the front of the machine. So that blade's not doing me any good right now. When that blade does good is when you're digging down in a hole and you're pulling out some like wet, heavy clay and you're lifting up, right? It's going to want to pull the back of the machine up. But when you're in this hard stuff, it's kind of opposite of that. When you're digging down, it's lifting the front of the machine up. So let's take a couple passes right now, digging with the blade in front, and then we'll spin around, put the blade in the back, and we'll do the same thing. See how the front of the machine's coming up? Spinning around a little bit. One more like that. Lifting the front of the machine up. Not only that, I'm kind of sliding a little bit too. No big deal. That's a pretty good rock right there. Now what we'll do, we'll spin around.
blade behind me. I'm gonna put a little pressure on it. All right. Now we're gonna dig back into this hard stuff. Doesn't lift up on the machine because that blade in the back is keeping me stable. Look at that, big rock. Yeah, keeping that blade in the back like that in the harder material definitely is more stable. While I'm thinking of it, I'll show you how this uh, blade is controlled. This controls your blade up, down. Windows are fogged up a little bit. I got the AC crank and it's pretty humid. So that's your up, your down, and this is your angle. Angle to the left is that button. Angle to the right, left, right, left right that's all there is to it something else to keep in mind when you're getting set up to dig you know make sure you're in a good spot you level your area up and you have as much track touching the ground as possible if you don't you know you still be able to dig but you're not going to be real happy you're going to be bouncing around all over the place and just feeling kind of unstable Try to make sure before you start digging you're set up pretty well. Now I want to show you something here. We're down in this hole deep and I'm keeping my boom. You know my boom is way down in there. I have that blade in the back of the machine, right? It's in the back. Now if I get a real big heaping bucket reaching down in there, I'm going to pick up on the back of the machine now. This is where I kind of like to have the blade out in front. Look at that, see I got a big heavy bucket there. So as far as the blade goes, I run it both different ways, I do. I know a lot of people have different opinions on that. I know back in the day, well excavators, they didn't have blades on them, but the big ones, no matter what, you dug over the front of the machine, the idlers not the drive motors. That was probably for two reasons. Number one, it may wear out your uh, drive motors prematurely. I don't know that. But number two is those drive motors on those old excavators, they would stick out. They'd stick out past the tracks and you could actually reach them with your bucket. So I think that might be why they told everyone, definitely 
dig over top of your idlers, not the drive motors, because you're going to be bailing away. You know, say you're loading big rock trucks or whatever, you're getting up close to the machine, you could rip your own drive motor off on those old machines. And uh, I know that's one of the reasons they said to uh, always dig over the front of the machine. Also, before I forget, I want to mention behind door number one here. See this lever right here? Well, when I started off this video, I was explaining the controls here. You know, right side is boom and bucket. Left side is stick and swing, right? That is called ISO controls uh, or cat controls, a lot of people call them. That's what I like to run. Now, if you flip this lever over... All right, now we are on SAE controls. I'll show you that. So now I'm on SAE controls. Now if I pull back on the control on the right, it's gonna bring my stick in. See that? Bringing the stick in, moving the stick out. And my boom is over here on the left. Pull back, lifts the boom up, push down, puts the boom down. Your uh, swing is still the same as the ISO controls. Bucket, still the same. Now, if you have a uh, like a backhoe on your tractor or something, it's probably SAE controls, which is the way it is right now. So I think most machines out there right now, you can switch them, either one. I prefer definitely the ISO controls, but it's kind of weird when I run a uh, like the backhoe on a tractor, I'm fine with those ones. But if I try running SAE on the excavator, I can barely hit the ground with the bucket. Uh, takes me a little while to get used to it. You know you're getting comfortable with a machine when you don't have to think about what any of these controls do. Once you get to that point, it doesn't take long. Uh, then you can, you know, be pretty productive. I'm going to switch that back before I forget. Back to ISO. Well, I got a pretty nice pile of shale there so far. I think after uh, we wrap this video up, I may add to it just a little bit. And like I said, this machine's going to be leaving in a few days. So I'm going to have to get it all cleaned up. But man, I am going to miss this. This has been a heck of a machine. We've got a lot of work done with this. They have come so far over the years. You know what I mean? Compared to the old excavators I used to run, these things are just so nice. So smooth, powerful. Really, really nice. Now before we wrap this video up, I want to revisit a few points that we already touched on. Specifically blade positioning, front or back. I run it both ways. You could see when I was in the hard stuff, I like having that blade behind me. That way when you're coming down on it, it keeps the front of the machine from coming up off the ground. But when you're in the softer stuff, maybe wet heavy clay, and you're way down in there in the hole and you're pulling up, I like to have the blade in the front. And what that does, it keeps the back of the machine from coming up. Also, keep in mind, get that machine nice and level and steady and get as much track on the ground as you can before you start digging. Just make it a whole lot easier. You won't have a bunch of rocking around and you'll be more productive and it'll be more enjoyable when you're doing your work. Now, I'm sure I missed a few things that I wanted to talk about or that you wanted me to cover. If I did, please let me know in the comments. I'll have this machine a few more days and I'll make sure we talk about it in an upcoming video. But I think that's it for today's video. And like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. Thanks.